So why do we manage at 21 days to go? So if you've been inside the Tasty Universe for any length of time, pretty much only takes you about maybe 11, maybe 16 minutes, and you can quickly realize that we like to get into our trades at 45 days and then get out of our trades at 21 days. Why is that the case? Like, What is the underlying reason that's driving those timing mechanisms? Well, put very simply, we want to put a greater emphasis on time and volatility and a, a lower or less of an emphasis on direction. Because when you think about making money as an options trader, you're only going to make it one of three ways. You're going to make it through direction, you're going to make it through time, or you're going to make it through volatility. We want to place a greater emphasis on those non-directional elements, time and volatility, if we possibly can. So managing our especially undefined risk positions at 21 days to go or before allows us to do that. So Paul, go ahead and bring us into the information here today. The reason why we're doing that and kind of the reason driving the reason in terms of, you know, wanting to be less directional with our positions, wanting to put a greater emphasis on time and volatility and what have you, it's because of the gamma risk that comes along with taking a position inside of 21 days to go. So when you sell options, you are short gamma. If you were to buy options, you would be long gamma. We primarily sell options, right? We're primarily option sellers. We want the positive theta. We want the negative Vega, we want all those things. When you sell options, you are also negative or short gamma. That's the same thing. What does that mean just intuitively? Like if I had to explain that in just English, what would that actually mean? Well, put very simply, when the market moves against you, your gamma is going to pick up steam, like your gamma is going to get stronger. And so what that's going to do is it's going to cause you to kind of flip your directional bias. So if I'm bullish and the market starts running away from me, I am going to be less and less bullish on the position. I am going to be in a situation where now I need the market to come back to me when it comes to the directional bias that I might have on a given strategy, especially something like a strangle. It starts off neutral. If the market does run up higher, now all of a sudden I need the market to come back lower. If the market were to go down, now I need the market to run up higher. That's the basic idea behind being short gamma or being negative gamma. You're constantly flipping around from a contrarian standpoint. But that's kind of the sign of gamma. That's kind of the direction that you want the underlying stock to go. The gamma risk actually has more to do with the magnitude of the gamma. So this is the actual size of the gamma. Remember, when it comes to directional bias or directional risk, there's basically two layers to your directional risk. The top layer is going to be your delta. The bottom layer is going to be your gamma. So if you think about delta as kind of being the speed of your directional bias, gamma measures the acceleration of that uh, directional bias. And so gamma measures how delta itself changes You know, as the market moves and the position begins to move around and the underlying stock price changes. And so when we start thinking about how much directional bias do I have? How much directional exposure am I exposed to in the market, in this given stock, in this position, what have you? The delta and the gamma together are going to show you what that directional bias looks like. Okay, well, here's what we know. Just by looking at or studying the, the time left in the expiration cycle, how many DTE are we carrying in that position? That is going to have a direct effect on how much gamma we are naturally exposed to. Now, this is not the only thing that's driving gamma. This is not the only thing that's impacting gamma, but it is something that is more or less completely under our control. Because the reality is, if you're outside of 21 days to go, so if I'm at 45, 44, 40, 37, what have you, you know, I'm going to be in a situation where gamma is just naturally on the lower end. Gamma is much, much lower than it will be later if I hold the position closer to expiration. So this allows me to put a greater emphasis on these non-directional elements like time, like volatility. This is one of the reasons why when you look at the tasty research, you're watching a market measures, you're watching an options jive, you're watching a tasty bites segment, whatever it might be, you're going to see that the results are pretty 
pretty much consistently more impressive in the earlier part of the cycle. Like 45 to 21 just continues to be more impressive, more reliable than 21 to expiration when it comes to the DTE on the position. Well, one of the reasons why is exactly what we're explaining right here. There's a greater emphasis on time and volatility in the earlier part of the cycle, less of an emphasis on time and volatility in the later part of the cycle because inside of 21 days to go, this is where that gamma begins to naturally tick up. This is where now all of a sudden direction becomes a bigger driver of the results on the trade or of or, uh, uh, on the results of the position. And this is na namely because that gamma begins to tick up higher. Now, if I'm at 21 days or 18 days or 17 days, like, is it a huge difference? Not really. The gamma begins to really start to grow teeth right around maybe 14 days to go or 10 days to go. But just inside of 21, that's right when the tide is beginning to turn. That's right when kind of the, you know, the tea le uh, the not the tea leaves. The leaves are beginning to change. That's what I meant to say. That's right when <laughs> that's right when the gamma kind of dynamics of the position are beginning to kind of change colors a little bit. So that's why we like to manage at 21 days to go. Because again, we want to put a greater emphasis on time and volatility, less of an emphasis on direction if we can do so. And this is completely avoidable when it comes to the natural tendency of gamma to rise as you get closer to expiration. Now, one final point. This is a much bigger deal and has a much bigger impact on undefined risk positions relative to defined risk positions. So short puts, short strangles, ratio spreads. These are far more impacted by the gamma changes in the position than a defined risk strategy. So vertical spread, iron condor, what have you on the defined risk standpoint, those aren't really exposed to gamma risk. Because remember, if I have defined risk, what have I done by definition? I have bought an option for every short option that I have in the trade. So I'm not exposed to any negative, uh, any unlimited negative gamma. I'm not exposed to any uncovered gamma exposure. So I don't really have any gamma risk going into the end of a trade's life as it gets closer and closer to expiration because the long option is covering all the short options. And so when it comes to managing at 21 days to go, if you have something that's defined risk, vertical iron condor, things of that nature, take them off if you can. Like if you have a profit, go ahead and take it off. Like if you've hit your, object, uh, uh, your objectives or you're close to your objectives, by all means, take it off. But if you're not there yet, the, the onus, the urgency is not quite there like it is with undefined risk because the gamma is already capped by those long options. And so there is, you know, four or five, I don't know, maybe nine minutes on why we manage at 21 days to go.